What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I kind of want to talk about the IS300 and my ownership. I've had it for coming on four years to four years in the next two months or so. And I kind of want to talk about the pros, the cons, how I like about the car, how I feel about it as a drift car now that I've owned it for four years, would I buy it again and things like that. So we're gonna drive around, it's a little bit rainy, but let's talk about the IS300. I bought this car in 2019. It was 100% stock. It didn't, I mean, the only mod it really had was tint, but other than that, it was 100% stock. And it was a really good, comfortable car. Bought it in 2019 for 4,500. So at that time, for a manual IS300, really good deal. I mean, that was a good deal for its time too. It had 190,000 miles when I got it. Now it's at 204. And the reason I got this car was because I wanted to get back into drifting. I had a Miata for barely a year. I drifted Miata and I hated it. And I wanted a car that I can daily, that I can take to the track, you know, be comfortable and still a little bit more modern because, you know, if you're looking at 240s, they're, they're old now. And a lot of things need to replace. A lot of them are salvaged and been modified already. And so it comes with a lot of, I guess, issues already. And so an IS300 is still, I would say, more in the modern era. And that's why I got it. And you know, it, hung, it comes with a 2JZ. And at the time, you know, I didn't know much about 2JZs. I didn't know much about cars. The most things I ever done in a car was put on coilovers. And that's pretty much it. And this car is the first car I've learned in. So these are the pros and cons of, of me owning it. I'll go over the pros first. Well, one, it's comfortable. When you buy the car, it feels like a 2000 car. It has leather seats, cloth leather seats. It has four doors so you can carry a lot of people. It's, um, it's not fast, but it's not slow either. Um, you know, it can get you up to speed. It has a good torque range. You know, I think from factory, these have about 180 to the wheels, which is relatively good for uh, you know a stock car for this time, and yeah, it just it was just reliable. And I think also with this being a Toyota, this being a 2JZ, and being built around that time, the early 2000s, reliability was a big thing. And so things were easy to work on. All you needed to do was oil change and regular maintenance. Um, because this car was you know 190,000 miles. I had to do the timing belt, the water pump, um, and just a bunch of other seals, front seals, camshaft seals, crank seals, rear main seals, valve cover seals, and all that. And I still haven't touched any of the seals to this day. Uh, four years later, but I would say 10,000, 15,000 miles of just straight drifting. And this car has not skipped the beat. So I would say the i300 really has it going for you. And for a very first car, a very entry level car, this car to me was very easy to work on. And I've never worked on a car this deep as much as the IS300. I've taken out the trans four or five times, probably more than that. I've done a time belt water pump. I pulled out a 2JZ out of, a, out of a, a donor car I had. Super easy, valve covers, take out the exhaust, um, intake manifold. I've done a lot on these cars and as a first time person doing it it was never a problem for me it was so easy every time um, I got it back together uh, it, it was just so easy to work on and I've you know I have no experience working on a lot of other cars but my baseline is gonna be this car and for me this felt easy another thing I really liked about this car is it is very very common it was never designed to be a full-on sports car it was considered a sports luxury and so there were so many cars made. I mean, the manual is probably gonna be the rarest, but still, there's so many parts, aftermarket parts, OEM parts that are available. Like this car came in the IS300, the GS300, the SE300, 
and a lot of suspension is similar to the other cars, right? I have a JZX from a Chaser upper control arm. My rears are GS300 upper control arms. The ball joints are similar from the the, G, the GS300s. The ball joints are similar to the GS300s. And for inner and outer tie rods, if you have an angle kit, you can either use a whole bunch of other cars and it works. You can use GS300, you can use Corolla because those are really long Prius. Um, yeah, there's a lot of support, especially from Toyota. A lot of cars cross over. There's a, you know, the FRS BRZ disc fit in this car as well. The suspension design is pretty similar to this car for some reason. But yeah, you can pretty much get all the parts that you want and need to this day. Um, there's not much parts that are hard to get. Um, I know getting the rear uppers are pretty hard to get OEM like from a parts store, but online you can still get pretty easily. So having, you know, this car still will re be relatively modern. You know, the car is, how old is this car now? 20 years old now, but the parts and OEM parts for it, are they still exist it's because they made this car all the way till 2005, so. And honestly, this car looks really good. Like, it is a, to me, it's a timeless shape car. It is a very boxy, aggressive kind of car. Um, it fits almost like the early, not late 90s, early 2000 theme, and it just, I don't know, it's, it's a good car. I love four doors, so I might be biased to how this car looks, but I love how it just looks like a good luxury sports car, and it's just a timeless look. When I got into this car, the aftermarket part seen for this car was not that big. I mean, it was it was getting there, it was just starting. The biggest ones that I've known were making like good aftermarket parts were figs and excessive manufacturing. And then if you wanted to go cheap, Godspeed made some and Megan made some. And those were pretty much it at the time. And then now you have a huge support for it, which is kind of good now if you're getting into it. You know, you have, um, you know, of course you have excessive, you have figs, you have PBM, you have Easy Knuckle, you have KFD, you have FDF, you have Wisefad making kits for it now. Um, you even have companies like uh, KBD making body kits for this car. Um, so there's so much support for this now that it's much easier and more options to you know build a car the way you like where for me there wasn't much option it was just go fix and spend all that money go excessive which was a new company and no one was really using the ink at the time i think ed knuckle was just starting too so yeah the, the support now is just massive in which i really do enjoy that part of the owning the car now Another thing I like about this car is it is extremely dailyable still. I have reclinable buckets, I have a half cage, um, fully built suspension on everywhere. All the bushings are poly, transmission bushings are poly, subframe bushings are poly, diff bushings are poly, low control arms are poly, front arms are all high joints. And I drive this car to the track all the time and I never feel like I'm in like a full on race car. It just feels like it just feels like a very stiff sedan. And so I really like it because it still has a daily ability of it. If you wanted to, you can buy this car daily and drift in it and be your only car. I know plenty of people that do that. And I mean, you can do that with other cars, but I think the cost of upkeeping it can be a little more. And I think upfront this car to daily and drift, the upfront cost is just very little to maintain on the road. So let's get to the cons of owning this car. For one, like there's not much options you can do in terms of getting more power out of this car there's the really only viable cost-effective option is to swap the car and swapping the car is not cheap anymore maybe back three years ago it was you know putting a 1j which wouldn't cost as much as it did now a 1j for the car like buying the motor and trans it's like 5k and now putting a 2 jz GTE is just even more, probably almost double that. So your options are very limited in terms of like how much power you can get out of the, from the factory motor. At this point, like I don't even bother because you know, intake, exhaust, headers, really not gonna do much for this car. If I get five or 10 horsepower out of all that, if you're lucky, and then you know, you're kind of stuck and plateaued there. So if you really want to get power out of this car, you can either swap or turbo this engine but the things but the problem with this engine which i didn't know buying into this car is that this engine is not 
as strong as the other two JZs, especially the non-BBTI versions. These cars cannot hold boost that well because of high compression. And so you can buy a CX Racing Turbo Kit, but the max boost you're probably gonna be limited to running safely is five to six pounds and right around 300 horsepower. Any more than that, it would just blow up your motor because the pistons are really weak on this car. And so if you're coming into the chassis with the mindset of having power, it, this thing is not the cheapest route to go, right? I got it with the intention of drifting, thinking that it had good power from factory, but as I drive it more, it's slow. It's fun to drive, don't get me wrong, and you can drive the hell out of it with the power. I know people that drive really good with it, and so um, it's just that if you're trying to be competitive with a stock car, this is not it. And if you do have the money to throw at it, it's great, but if you're just buying a stock car to have fun and you want to get to a competitive level eventually, this might not be it. The factory transmissions are really, really weak. Um, the W55, they just grenade out of nowhere. I think I've told this story multiple times on my channel, but the reason my W55 blew was because I was just exiting off a freeway. I was going from, I think, fourth gear to third gear, and all of a sudden I just couldn't find third gear. It just disappeared. It wasn't speeding or nothing. I was exiting an off ramp, and it just, gone and I was luckily I was exiting towards home so that way I could just coast all the way I think I was a second I turned into a neighborhood and drove home which worked out pretty well um, and in terms of parts now it is pretty hard to get transmissions and pretty expensive um, I have a W58 and um, it's stronger than a W55 not by much um, it's definitely lasted me a lot longer but um, the next step up, especially from the Toyota line of transmissions, you're looking at the R154 or the AR5, and those can be expensive as hell. Um, you're probably looking at maybe 2,000 for an R154 now, which is pretty crazy because those transmissions used to be, you know, five, 600 bucks not that long ago. So transmission options are very limited. There's a lot of swap kits now where you can put in you know, a W, no, not a W, you can put in a CD009, you can put in the ZF Trans, um, it's just a little extra work, but there are options now to get out of the W Series transmissions or the Toyota transmissions, And but if you're coming into the car, it is a big, expensive upgrade that you need to do eventually once the transmission breaks, and you just never know what's gonna happen. Um, it can happen, you know, the first month of ownership, it could happen in five years of ownership, you just never know, and so, um, coming into that, it's just an added expense that will eventually come. It really does feel like it's becoming the new 240 just because of the owners that are doing some pretty wild stuff to this car. It's not being maintained really well. It doesn't even need much to maintain. Um, people just kind of go straight into doing some crazy stuff with it, slam it on the ground, which I'm not mad at, but if you're gonna slam it to the ground, at least do some maintenance like lower ball joints and bushing and stuff. Otherwise, these cars are known for having lower ball joint fail. And if you just slam the car, um, I always see posts. There's even a Facebook group called Why Are IS 300s Why Are IS 300s Like This? Just because the kind of people that get into the car and the mods that they do can be a little bit wild. And so um, it doesn't have the best rep owning this car. But, um, you know, there's really two spectrums. People that buy it and make it really nice and, you know, drive it like how it was not really attended, but drive it the way it should be driven. Or people that just go the cheapest route, buy the cheapest part, and just, they don't even make it look good. Like, they just think it looks good because they bought aftermarket parts. It looks like, looks like shit, and it just doesn't run that good either. And so, um, you know, I just try to find that middle ground, which is, be kind of cheap as possible, but make sure it runs as smooth as possible. That's kind of my goal. So the OEM kits are very expensive. They're really around $1,000, 2000 KBD does make a, KBD does make a BN kit replica, but any other kit are like damn near impossible to get or super expensive. So you're looking at like the Vertex rep, the Elixirs, um, a, uh, what's it called, HKS. Like those are damn near impossible to get nowadays. And so it's really hard to make your car stand out from other cars. 
without looking tacky or so it's kind of the con of just trying to make this car look different and stand out without being the typical bn kit i think bn probably the most popular right now bn and that's it after owning this car for four years um you know i think the good outweigh the bad i think if you're trying to get into a competitive chassis this might not be it just yet but it is a really good starter car um i think it's a good intro to drifting car it's a good sports car it's a good car to slam it's a good car to work on um it's a good car to learn to work on and it, it taught me a lot of things you know the suspension design is really simple really easy to understand which i'll make a full video on how to understand the geometry of the suspension and how it affects and how to adjust it and how it affects each part of the car and yeah overall i really enjoy this car another thing about this car i think they just they don't sound good they uh there's not really a good exhaust for this car it's either to make it really loud and raspy or to make it you know tamed a little bit quiet which i kind of have it kind of tamed i don't have it too loud because it just doesn't it sounds like a shitty honda when it's really loud and it's kind of annoying but it does sound there's ways to make it better but you probably have to go a custom route there's not many options for exhaust there is hks and there's a dna motoring which is like a replica and then i think that is it the rest is all a bunch of ebay stuff there's megan y pipes and then there's a bunch of uh knockoff headers that you can buy from ebay and there's also obx and, and those are pretty much options other than that they're like the custom route which will get really expensive and there's other small companies that make wide pipes and stuff but it just doesn't make sense to spend two thousand dollars on uh, exhaust manifold when you can just turbo or buy a swap for the car which is why i say getting power for this car is kind of ridiculous and kind of expensive other than that i would own this car again i would buy it again so i would not pay the prices i did like i would not pay the prices now because right now a manual one goes between 7 to 10 and that is kind of ridiculous for what you're getting because you, you know you're getting a manual car but you're not getting a fast car you're not getting a turbo car you're not getting a 300 horsepower car you're getting 180 2000 lexus with you know and there's not much room for improvement after that except spending more money but other than that if you're okay with that this car is a really good starter car to buy to go out and drift to get into drifting to daily to do everything you want to learn how to work on cars and now there's a bunch of parts availability and videos to help you guide you through owning this car so um, i would do it again that's my thoughts things i didn't know going into it i hope this video informed your decision on owning an ice 300 i love it i'll keep owning it i had thoughts about selling it i realized i really do love this car so i'm keeping it we're going to keep building it and I'll make videos for you guys. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.